it is Wednesday, what, the 20, what is it, <laughs> the 28th maybe? Wanted to let you know that I taught Monica to roll over. Um, she knows how to sit and shake and high five and lay down and turn around, but roll over was a difficult one for her and I'd have to like flip her over. Anyway, uh, yesterday she actually rolled over for the first time, so I'll throw in a little video clip here. No. Hey, come over here. Sit. Okay, roll over. Roll over. Okay, Carol. Yay. So I was so proud of her for doing that. She's growing up, so I need to get, I need to get her into some puppy training classes. Uh, I was kind of on the path to doing that and I have somebody to call. I actually um, had emailed somebody um, that was listed as doing dog training. She said she doesn't really so much anymore but her friend does and so uh, her friend actually sent me an email and said give me a call but then my dad died a couple days later and so um, you know that kind of went on the back, back burner. So I'm, I'm gonna wait until after my dad's um, ceremony and then I'll, you know, I'll start doing it then. You know, we're just gonna have a house full of people. My two nieces and their husbands and my uh, one niece has a little two-year-old and um, they're all gonna be at our house. So, um, so yeah, I figured I'd just wait until all of that stuff passes. But um, let's see, okay, so I am heading to Prescott Valley today. It's about the same distance away from us as Flagstaff and I'm going for um, the foot doctor. It's actually the same company that my husband used to work for. They have two locations, one in Flagstaff, one in Prescott Valley. And um, the doctors were really booked out in Flagstaff and so they were able to fit me in with this new doctor, new foot doctor. So I'm going to that. You know, that's one thing that I am not going to miss about living where we live. And, and that is just that we just have to drive everywhere. And I know that for the past, you know, we've, we've lived here for a year and a half. And for the first year, I was driving to Flagstaff for work. And I was going up to, I mean, not every week. I probably only needed to go up to campus about once a week. But... Then I was going up. I was going up to see my dad a couple days a week too, and so I've been making a lot of trips up there. But even in addition to that, if you just cancel out all of the the trips that I made for those purposes, it's just there's so much driving involved, you know. Because in this small town where I live, there is one grocery store, there's a CVS and a Walgreens and an Ace Hardware, and that's it. If you want to go to Home Depot, you have to drive a half hour. If you want to go to Walmart, it's a half hour. If you want to go to Michael's, it's an hour in either direction to, you know, an hour to Prescott, an hour to Flagstaff. If you, um, you know, just, there's just so many things. Target, um, Kohl's, anything like that. I just realized um, how much retail is important to me. We are, um, as I told you, we're continuing to get the house ready uh, um, in the event that we will be putting it on the market. And so Saturday, we have some landscapers coming out just to kind of spruce up the yard. John's been working a lot, and so he's just not had the time to do it. Also, before, you know, we when we had the cows behind our house still, John would mow the yard and, which would take him all day. So he'd have to empty those bags a bunch of times. But he was able to just dump the grass over the fence because the cows would eat the grass. But now that the cows aren't there anymore, we can't just dump grass over the fence into you know somebody else's property. So now there's that whole extra step and it just you know takes a lot longer. So, okay, you're going to probably hear my um, GPS talking. It just gave me some directions. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, and I haven't shown it very much because it's hideous, but our master bathroom, while it was done really nicely in earth tones with earth, earth tone 
tile countertops and and everything it had it has a blue toilet blue sinks and a blue jet tub I mean a really nice whirlpool jet tub and it's blue light blue kind of periwinkle maybe depends on the light sometimes it looks like robin's egg blue but all of that to say that the real estate agent said listen if it's going to cost a lot of money to fix that then don't ch don't change that stuff out but if it's going to cost less than twenty five hundred dollars go ahead and, and switch it out because people are going to look at that and think oh my gosh I, I won't be able to live with that and they'll either change their mind about the house or they will offer less for the house, factoring in way more money than it would actually cost to change that stuff out. Well, we have a handyman guy and he is going to be able to switch all this stuff out for us for, you know, probably $1,500 total. We purchased a toilet at Home Depot when we were down in Phoenix. Uh, I ordered a tub which arrived yesterday and then, um, I have two sinks coming tomorrow so the guy is gonna start on Friday ripping out some of the stuff and switching it over but yeah I mean we're still waiting to find out about whether this one particular position is going to be approved to be refilled after somebody vacated it and um, once we find out because John's in Flagstaff he's scheduled in Flagstaff for the next four weeks but not in a full-time benefit eligible position so he'll be getting full-time paychecks but we just really are looking for something full-time so we'll see what happens with that and then um, as soon as we find out that the position's been approved and he gets that job then like we'll we'll have the house on the market within you know within a couple days I think the realtor just needs to send out a photographer and then that it, it will probably get listed within just a couple of days we're gonna have to rent it looks like if we if we move to Flagstaff now if something comes up in the meantime in Phoenix then we wouldn't have to rent because there's a lot on the market in Phoenix Flagstaff has almost nothing on the market and things that are going on the market are going pending the same day full asking price with like five offers and so it's just looking like it's gonna it's kind of a crazy market right now and so I think not I think well yeah that we're just gonna that we're just gonna rent for a while and just sit tight until the market changes a little bit I've also heard that there might be an economic downturn probably not like 2008 not like that one but um, but the, 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 there will be some kind of economic downturn people are predicting and if that's the case then home prices are gonna drop and we certainly don't want to buy high because that's what we did before when we first moved to Flagstaff it was 2008 <clears throat> and the market was starting to go down but Flagstaff was hanging on to home values at the time so we ended up buying high and then it plummeted we were upside down on our house for a while and thankfully it came back up years later but that was um, it just would have been better had we rented then we could have actually come out way far ahead in selling this house selling the house so yeah so I'm I'm looking online for home rentals it doesn't even look like there's a ton of home rentals but it may change once we get closer to the end of the NAU school year because students who are renting houses will be leaving and um, so it could be that we're able to get into something at that point. Yeah. So yeah, kind of a lot going on, but a lot of hurry up and wait. Getting a lot of things ready, but still waiting to find out what's gonna happen in terms of a job for John. Well, guess what, you guys? I'm having surgery next Monday. Um, I saw the doctor and it's not an aroma and it's not a stress fracture and I wish I had gone to see him um, sooner. It actually, years ago, like back in the mid 90s, I had bunion surgery and they had taken my toe and cut it in half, my big toe, and then straightened it out and put a screw in there and um, 
when that happens, it not only straightens out the toe, but it also drops the, the joint. It makes it a little bit lower. Um, and so what happened is the joint is sitting a little lower than the joints of the three toes next to it. Those joints are sitting a little higher, meaning they're t bearing all of the weight of my foot. And so I've been doing all of these races forever. And um, they just said that, he said that it's just, you know, over the course of time, those joints, particularly two of them, the two middle toes, um, that those joints have just deteriorated and they're absolutely done with um, accepting <laughs> the weight. And, and so it's just, you know, causing pain. So he, he's gonna go in and um, do surgery on those two joints, the second and third toes, and shorten them basically, not by much. He said, my foot, it won't look like it. When you look at my foot, it won't look like the toes are shortened but he said that it will um, shorten it by a few millimeters and basically even out where the joints are so that those joints will be um, where the other, where the big toe joint is. And now they're all bearing the weight and not just putting the weight on those smaller joints. Um, yeah, how's that? So what this means for me, it's weird that I'm gonna, you might be thinking, why are you doing that? The week. Uh, the week before your dad's um, memorial, but I'm, I'm going to do that because if I don't do it then, my niece comes the next day and she doesn't leave until the following Tuesday. This doctor does surgeries on Mondays. And so I'd have to put it off two more weeks and I'm gonna be 10 weeks in a surgical shoe, one of those stiff boot kind of a thing. Um, and so for the first six weeks, I'll be in one of those shoes, but only can walk on my heel. And then the next two to four weeks after that, I can bear weight completely on my foot, but still in that shoe. It's my right foot. So it'll be really interesting with driving. Um, yeah, my husband, because of his ankle, you know, we have a scooter. We own one of those knee scooters. And so I'll be able to use that. That'll be nice for around the house or, you know, whatever. Sometimes it's just easier to use something like that. Then. But I don't know. Heel walking isn't that, isn't that big of a deal. So if I wait until after my family is gone, then we're looking at a recovery time that's going into the summer. This way, I will be out of the shoe by the first week of June, I think. And, um, and then, you know, I won't be getting back into like walking six miles a day or anything like that, but I will be able to start wearing a regular shoe and walking again. And, um, and he said, he said, there's a lot of quick fixes we could do, but it, this, this is always going to come back. It's always going to nag at you. And he said, it sounds like you have been doing all of the things that almost all the things that we would have asked you to do leading up to this. And he said, so, you know, if you're up for surgery, we can do that and, and get rid of this. So, yay, I'm not going to have a sore foot anymore. Um, yeah, so I never had a stress fracture. I don't have a neuroma. And um, I just need to get this done so that my foot functions the way it should. So there you go. So I'm trying to get a hold of my mom right now. I know she'll be in Flagstaff next Monday. Just need to make sure that she can pick me up from the hospital or from the surgery center and take me back to her house until John gets off work that day and can take me home. Um, yeah, anyway, yeah, I've got to line up a few things and, oh, what am I gonna do with my puppy? Oh, no, it's okay, it's okay. My mom will be there so she can help, but thankfully Monica uses a dog door. Wow, that would be really awful. I, well, I just couldn't do it. If this had been, if this had been, uh, you know, a month or two ago, there's just no way I could have done it with a puppy that was that young, so. Hey guys, it's Thursday and I'm in Flagstaff for a very long day. Um, it is seven o'clock in the morning. Um, I have a, a lot of things to be up here for today and I just figured why should John and I take two cars? Um, sorry, weird light on my face. 
but anyway so I just dropped John off at work and I have Monica with me I'm gonna go to my mom's house she's down in Phoenix but I'm just gonna use her house as home base today uh, it's kind of too early for me to do anything that I need to do yet today so I'm just gonna I brought my makeup with me and so I'm gonna put on put on my makeup and check my email and let Monica run around and then um, then the day starts as a whirlwind I am going over to the assisted living place where my dad was actually both of them I'm going to the care home first the place where he was at the end because the girls over there um, wanted to meet Monica and I kept having to wait to bring her by until um, until she'd had her vaccinations because they have dogs over there and the caregivers are allowed to bring their dogs to work and all that so um, so I had to wait so they've been they've been texting me uh, since my dad died and said are you gonna bring her over because you know we want to meet her so I'm gonna bring her over there today to meet everyone um, and then drop her back off at my mom's then I'm meeting a friend for lunch I have an errand to run something to take care of on campus at NAU uh, having to do with my um, teaching classes after retirement and then uh, what else? Um, oh, I, at, the, at the other care home where my dad was, the assisted living place, um, he had a friend there uh, who was his first friend there and his last friend there, meaning that she, she befriended him when he first got there and then when he was even declining and other people sort of started backing away from him, she did not back away from him. Um, anyway, I don't think she knows my dad died and my mom's been trying to, to get in touch with her and keeps leaving messages there, but she hasn't heard back from her. So I want to make sure that she knows and I also want to make sure she knows she's invited. There's a fire in the trees over there. Hmm. But I want to make sure that she knows that she's also invited to the memorial which is uh, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. This, this Sunday is Easter. Um, oh gosh, it looked like there was more smoke, but I think that's just a street cleaner. You know what's great? When there are street cleaners, um, it's kind of a sign that they think that, that there's going to be no more snow. Although, I mean, I guess we are at the end of March. Usually we don't get too much more snow after that in Flagstaff but so uh, okay anyway but there is smoke over there um, so after I do that I'm meeting with a girl at the church where we're having the memorial service and then I have uh, gosh I've got to pick up John and we've got worship rehearsal tonight and that is it's gonna be short because it's just for for Good Friday services and so it's just gonna be like an hour-long rehearsal so I'm we'll go pick up Monica take her to rehearsal with us and then rehearsal ends at 7 and then we'll head home but yeah 12 hours up here um, it's gonna be uh, quite a long day and then tomorrow I need to come up too but just for Good Friday services so I don't need to come up until the afternoon um, yeah so it was really funny this morning when I was dropping John off. He had a jacket in the car with him, but he said, "Uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to wear my jacket in. It's uh it's not cold." And he he hit the button on the car that shows the temperature. It says 33. And he says, "Yeah, it's not cold." And I was like, "It's 33. Do you know how many people would laugh if you said 33 wasn't cold?" And but what he meant by that is, if it's 33 right now, it means that it's gonna. You know, we can have a a 30 to 40 degree temperature swing during the day. So if it's 33, it's probably gonna be getting up into the 60s today. I'm not exactly sure what it's supposed to be, but um, so it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be terrible. Hi guys, it is Saturday, the day before Easter. <laughs> I don't know, is that the 31st? Uh, anyway, um, I am on my way over to the grocery store. It's kind of my last day to do um, really uh, more physical things since I'm having my surgery on Monday. Um, the reason it's my last day is we're going to drive up to Flagstaff tomorrow um, for Easter and then my husband's gonna drop me off at my mom's 
Um, so my mom's going to take me to surgery on Monday and then my husband's going to pick me up and take me back home. Um, so yeah, so, so today is really the last day and then my nieces and their husbands are coming in town on Thursday. So today I'm going, I made up a menu and I'm going grocery shopping right now. Cleaned out the refrigerator this morning and then now I'm going to get the stuff I need for, um, for meals. We have a landscaper at the house today, just kind of, um, you know, sprucing up the yard, mowing it, getting, you know, weed, <coughs> weed whacking, trimming, I guess I would say, edging, um, getting rid of the leaves and hauling all that stuff away. And uh, yeah, just kind of getting that stuff ready. John has decided that um, as soon as, well, I think I told you this, right? That um, we have all the stuff to change out, the blue tub, sink, toilet, everything in our master bathroom, and that should be done. Um, well, I don't know. I'm hoping in the coming week it, it'll get finished, or most of it. Um, but John just said, you know what, let's just go. Let's just go to Flagstaff before it gets hot. And um, he said, you know, I'm, I'm doing full-time work up there. We'll just wait for the benefits to come. Us And to John, I think he just doesn't want to keep commuting. And he wants to be out of here before it gets hot. Then we don't have to move in the heat. And um, we can enjoy the Flagstaff summer, which is the best time of year in Flagstaff. And not only is it a beautiful time of year in Flagstaff, it is also... Flagstaff knows how to throw a party, man. I mean, I guess people have been kind of cooped up for the winter, and all of a sudden there's just stuff going on all the time. There's, you know, not just 4th of July or 4th of July weekend. It's like 4th of July week with all kinds of stuff going on. Um, every single weekend of summer, there's some kind of festival going on. There's art in the park, and there's uh, the bluegrass festival and the beer fest and there's a hullabaloo and there's all, I mean, just tons of stuff going on all summer long and into the fall. And so we don't want to miss that. And then, you know, move there just as things are settling down and it's starting to get cold and we're going to be cooped up in a house again. So that would really stink to be cooped up all summer here and then get to Flagstaff in just in time to be cooped up for the winter. I would come out of my skin, but Anyway, um, so I'm uh, all that to say we are thinking that as soon as the bathroom is done and as soon as um, our family members go home, that we'll probably just go ahead and put the house on the market, sell it, and, um, and then, you know, get a place to rent and move. Kind of strange to think about that, but yeah. Um, yeah, John's pretty certain that Flagstaff is where he wants to be and we have people in Flagstaff who are just delighted that we're planning to come back. I mean, just, they were sad when we left and they're super happy that we're coming back and so um, I'm looking forward to it too. Yeah. Finishing touches going into the ceremony for my, for my dad. This was kind of sweet. My niece's husband is in the military super wonderful patriotic guy and my dad was not a career military guy he was only in for five years um, he was a pilot in the Air Force but my nephew really wants to honor my dad um, not with like a full-on we didn't want to do a full-on military um, funeral because my dad it, the service was not my dad's passion. You know, he was in for five years and I think anybody who serves in the military and is honorably discharged, I think anybody deserves accolades for serving the country. Um, but it wasn't what his whole life was about. And so, so what, um, but when my nephew, my nephew in law, um, texted, I guess he texted my brother and he's oh, he's deployed right now and he's going to be home in three days and then they're leaving like the next day to come out here i mean perfect timing right to be able to be be here for my dad's memorial but anyway brian wants to wear his dress blues 
and present my mom with the folded flag. So I just think that is the sweetest thing. So we're not gonna have like the flag folding ceremony or 21 gun salute or taps or anything like that. Do you know that you can do that? If you have a family member, even if they only served for, you know, like two years, but if they were honorably discharged, all you have to do is let the funeral home know that you want to have a military funeral and the funeral home just takes care of it. I mean, I guess like it's free. That's, I mean, do a little bit more research if, if you're thinking of doing that. But, um, but it sounded to me like it is something that is given as a, an honor to all um, veterans. So, yeah, so because I was just looking up some stuff about um, military ceremonies and stuff like that. But I think I think it'll be neat. I think it'll be at the end of the ceremony. We're going to have the slideshow of my dad. And I think right when the slideshow ends, my nephew will get up and go and uh, get the flag and walk over and present it to my mom. Um, and then there'll be the final prayer and then the ceremony will be over and then we'll have a reception. So, um yeah, so I think that's going to be neat. Neat. I think it's going to be a neat little um, touch, and it allows my nephew-in-law to really um, honor my dad and honor our family, and be part of our family. You know, because he is part of our family, but um, but he is one of the newest members of our family. So, yeah, so that's coming together, and that's in that's a week from today. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. If you can look forward to a memorial, but I am because I think it's going to be very special. Monica, you guys, I'm so, I feel so lucky to have this dog. She is the best puppy. Um, I just keep thinking back to Vanessa. Chloe was a good puppy because we already had Vanessa and Chloe just did everything Vanessa did. And so she, Chloe was very easy, but Vanessa being an only puppy, um, only dog at the time, um, she was not an easy puppy at all. She was just overly anxious. She had separation anxiety. She was hyper. She took over a year to potty train. She was just terrible as a puppy. We loved her, but we were, we were like, my gosh, having a puppy is a lot of work. And Monica is, I mean, here she is five months old. She hardly ever has an accident in the house anymore. She is, she uses the dog door almost always. Every so often we'll find a little pee spot in the dining room. I don't know why she does that, but she's, um, she doesn't have accidents over at my mom's house. She doesn't destroy things except paper. So if I left a book or a magazine out, she would, she has destroyed, um, things like that, but she doesn't chew furniture. She doesn't chew shoes. Um, she just likes her toys and, um, she is, I, I put her out on the patio, which is, you know, kind of fenced off, I mean, gated in. And, um, she stayed out there yesterday on the patio for probably 45 minutes before I brought her in, just kind of looking around and stuff. And she just doesn't need to have anybody with her entertaining her or anything. It was just so nice. We are so lucky to have such an easy dog. Hey guys, it's the morning of surgery. I am just changed into my my hospital gown. And can I ask you this question? Why did they make you take your bra off when the surgery is going to be on my foot? Anyway, um, so yeah, so I'm in my hospital gown and socks and my surgery is not for another hour and a half, but I have to be here getting ready. So um, anyway, wish me luck. So Hey guys, so I'm laying on the couch and sorry for the bright light <laughs> behind me. Um, let's see, it's about 6.30 in the afternoon. Then you can probably hear a buzzing sound in the background. We have this, uh, this machine that recirculates ice water so that, you know, it's not like you put a bag of frozen peas and then it thaws out and you have to refreeze it. Monica, stop. Monica, this is not about you. It's about me. She's like, yeah, right. Everything's about me. Um, anyway, so 
it recirculates water and um, then, you know, so then it's just constant cold. I'll show you in a second what it looks like and then we'll get that glare from behind me um, to not show. Um, so I, like I said, I'm, I'm actually on the couch in the media room. I've got my computer and my phone and water and a book and my medication and a movie I'm watching and um, so uh, just and Monica too and so just trying to kind of get myself and my foot's propped up and it doesn't it doesn't hurt um, I suppose it will <laughs> later but um, you know because they did do bone surgery uh, and put some screws in I think little tiny ones I've got my dad's walker I'll show you that in a second, um, which has been very helpful. It's a lot easier to use than crutches, and it also has a little seat on it so that I can set stuff on it, and that way when I go from one place to another, I can, you know, if I fill up a cup of water or something, I can set it on that and then roll myself wherever I need to go. So that's been really helpful to have my dad's walker. Um, yeah, let me go ahead and show you. Okay. So here's my foot propped up on like this wedge pillow. Uh, we got this when John had his ankle surgery and so that's really nice to keep my foot propped up. This is, well, the, the machine is down there with ice water in it. This thing right here has water, if I could show you underneath. I don't know if you can see that, but it circulates water through these little tubes. This thing is actually made for um, like a shoulder to wrap around for a shoulder and I actually had it from when I had shoulder surgery years and years ago um, and uh, but then you use these little straps to kind of strap things around where you want it so there's just cold going all the way around my foot and on my toes which is nice you can see I'm all bandaged up there I'll have the bandage on for 10 days so on the 12th I go in for my follow-up appointment and they take the dressing off. I don't know if the stitches come out then or what. So that'll be 10 days, so probably. Um, then, I'll move my computer. So then, uh, where's my shoe? So this is a surgical shoe. I think I showed it to you earlier. And that's gonna be just a lovely little fashion statement for me to wear. Um, over here, that's my dad's walker. And it has little handles and brakes and then there's that seat and so I can set stuff on it. Got all my other stuff set up over here. And Monica's kind of behind me now. Can't chew on my water bottle. She loves empty water bottles. She loves chewing on them and uh, there's still water in this, so she can't, she can't have it. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. A little, I, I'm, I'm almost due for taking another pain pill. And um, so it's definitely doing a good job keeping the pain away. And Monica, don't do that. Um, so I'm, re I'm really not in pain at this point. I imagine tomorrow might be a little bit worse because I think they had um, some pain medication or some kind of something running through the the IV. I know there was an antibiotic running through the IV and I think they had a little bit of pain medication that probably, that's probably worn off right now. I think they said that it, that doesn't last long. They said that the majority of the relief that I would get would be from pills. Um, but like I said, it's really, it's just not really bothering me. Um, I was on my feet for a, a while, not a long while, and I, and I was in my surgical shoe and heel walking. I can't put full pressure on my foot. But I was feeding the cats, and John's at work, and so I was feeding the cats and the dog and getting myself something to eat and refilling my water. And so I started to feel pressure in my foot, and I just know it's because my foot wasn't up and wasn't being iced, and so it was starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable. But, um, yeah, so it's going to be 10 weeks in the surgical shoe, 8 to 10 weeks, 6 weeks only heel walking, 
two to four weeks after that in the surgical shoe, but full weight bearing. And so, you know, it's kind of a long time, but I'm really, really happy because um, I'm gonna get this over with. I've been dealing with this for a long time and I probably should have taken care of it a long time ago, but I'm glad I didn't. As I think I mentioned before, it would have been hard to do with when my dad broke his hip and then, you know, and then got sick and then Monica was a puppy and I, I think it just would have been too difficult. Probably this, if I'd done it any earlier, it probably would have been easy, you know, like maybe two weeks ago would have been the earliest I could have gotten it done. And so, yeah, but at least this will be um, all said and done and I'll be able to get back into regular shoes and try to do some walking by the time June comes. We have decided to go ahead and just move to Flagstaff. Um, we are waiting for that benefit eligible position to um, be approved that John can have, but he's getting way more work up in Flagstaff, like full-time work and overtime up in Flagstaff in the float position. And so it just makes sense for us to be closer to where the work is and so as soon as the bathroom gets finished with the changes that we're making in there um, we're gonna put the house on the market so I would I would be I would imagine we'll have the house on the market in like maybe three weeks and then hopefully get to Flagstaff um, I don't know end of May or something be nice because that's gonna be when it starts to get really hot here and the weather there will be just lovely so um, yeah, big changes. And by then I'll be full weight bearing in the surgical shoe. So it'll make the move easier, packing easier. So I'm rambling. Mm -hmm.